Welcome back to another MA020 upgrade video. Today I'm going to go over various things you can do to take your Mini Z to the next level. If you haven't watched my MA020 unboxing or stage 1 upgrade videos yet, I suggest you go watch those before this one to catch up on what I've already covered. I'll leave a link to them down below. This is my quote unquote stage 2 video where I upgrade my Mini Z all wheel drive cosmetically and mechanically from a stock version as I add more upgrades on top of my Stage 1 setup to make it into a smoother, more controlled drifting machine. I've already installed and test driven a few of the upgrades while I was waiting for some parts to come in the mail. I'll show you how I added them to the car and I will also do a full install of the other upgrades in this video as well. You can do the custom changes to the car bodies yourself if you like customizing things like I do, as I'll show you some of the projects I have going on at the moment which ranges from wide body kits and custom GT wings to digital LEDs controlled via Wi-Fi, or FPV micro and HD camera mounts so I can drive in first person. In my previous videos, I only show some test driving on smooth concrete floor and found it very hard to gain full control no matter what tires I tried. But when I tested on hardwood floor and tile, I had much better results. I also tested the gyro ahead of time and right away could feel it made a huge difference in the handling. Plus, it's nice you can adjust how strong you want the sensitivity to be right there in the car. I want to start this video by going over all the performance upgrades I will be installing on the MA020 for my Stage 2 setup. Then after that, I will cover the cosmetic upgrades for the unpainted white bodies, as well as a custom headlight taillight kit with digital underglow LEDs, while finishing up with the FPV camera mounts last. Okay, let's go over the first upgrade I already installed uh, for the Stage 2 setup. It's the rear aluminum control rod. And it's, uh, it's held on by two screws, so it, you know, it'll take you like a few seconds to swap this out from the uh, original stock uh, plastic one that it comes with. And it doesn't look like much of, a, you know, of an upgrade, but it really stiffens up the rear end, which helps out a lot. Um, this plastic one is really flimsy. You know, it's like that's, there's way too much give in it, and you know you want a really stiff rear end. You don't want this flopping around back there. So, upgrading this is a good idea yeah. if you ever have the time. <clears throat> just two Phillips head screws. Just hold the tires. I would do it upside down. Hold the tires in place. Take that off put the new one on and then you know screw it in and you're done so that's all you gotta do for that next we have the gyro unit uh, from DOS micro or micro however you say it uh, it's like a little RC company that has small electronic parts for RC cars but yeah this is pretty easy to put in you just plug in the connector here it's a four pin connector uh, and then you place this upside down. Usually you have the wires running outside, but uh, I tucked them in underneath inside the housing here. Uh, it looks cleaner that way to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of space in there, so it is, it is a tight squeeze, but it can be done. You just gotta make sure that you have enough room to get the wires out here without pinching them. Uh, and then not to block the button here. So that's all you gotta do to put the gyro in. I could show you what it looks like. Uh, this little screw is real easy to lose. So, so yeah, there's you know not much to it, just that little board. smallest screws I've ever had to deal with. Yeah, you get the idea. Might need to use tweezers to hold this little guy still. That's back on, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll pop off uh, this housing and you know show you underneath there a little bit later. Also, to like you know where I soldered these guys to, I'll 
show you all that. Uh, just wanted to talk about the gyro right this minute. Um, but yeah, that's all you gotta do to put the gyro in. Just plug it in, take off the little black door, uh, throw this guy upside down on here, screw it down, and then, you know, just tuck the wire away or whatever, and that's it. And this is the little button right here to adjust the sensitivity on it. So I'll, I'll show you that later on as well. You know, when you go counterclockwise or clockwise, I forgot uh, which, which way does what, but I'll, I'll show you that as well. The other upgrades I'll be adding to the stage two setup will be some metal rims with round drift wheels or tires, I mean. So yeah, I wanna give these a try and see how they do. But yeah, I like the, the metal wheels. Uh, it's better than plastic. They feel pretty nice. All right, and to go with those, we're gonna increase the camber to three degree. So just in the front, I don't have any rear ones, so we'll just be changing the front and see how that does with these new round drift tires. Uh, so those will go on with those. And then last will be these metal swing arms, which I have a narrow setup. Uh, so there's narrow and wide, um, depending on what car bodies uh, your car comes with. So the skyline is narrow. Um, so your swing arms need to be short for a narrow setup. Uh, Cause if you get like the regular ones that, you know, most people run on the wide bodies, like these right here, they won't fit right. They'll be too long and you won't be able to use them. So it's a real small difference, but yeah, that one's just slightly longer than the other one. So be careful you don't buy these on accident if you have like a narrow setup on your car. <clears throat> but yeah, I'll install those all together. So yeah, I'll just take the wheels off and then get to work uh, on everything in there and get the swing arms off. And the old swing arms on there are plastic, so these new metal ones uh, should hopefully, you know, be a lot more durable and then also perform a lot better as well. So I'll take care of that right now. All right, let's start by getting the wheels out of the way. I've already taken the nuts off, so this is easy. All right. So we got that. I'll put the wheels back on. The new one's on last uh, after we change all this stuff out. So we have the short swing arms and the three degree camber knuckles here. So we'll start in the front. And the easiest way really to do this is just remove this little plastic clip, pull the pin out. Now this is loose. So we get some good light here. So I can just pop this guy out. And then take this, make sure the spring doesn't fall off and go anywhere. So keep that there. Okay. Just pop this off. And then this is the old one degree camera knuckle hat on there from stage one upgrades. Uh, and then we gotta take the swing arm out. This plastic one from the stock setup and we're gonna put the metal ones in. So we have two bearings in there. Uh, let me just pull this out and see if one of the bearings comes with it. Nope, okay. So yeah, you can see this is mainly, it's, I think it might have a little bit of metal on it. Like this part's metal, but that part's plastic. But you know, I'd, I'd rather just have an all metal uh, swing arm. Yeah, these don't look like they're gonna last too long. All right, so I need to get these bearings out. Uh, I usually use like a little plastic tool, kind of just 
knock them out. If they're, if they're already in there, I gotta, gotta pry it out. There we go. Get a little bit dirty. And then once you get one out, it's really easy to pop out the other. Just go to the other side and push forward. And now it's off. That guy's out. Okay, we'll use the other one, the three degree. Put those bearings back in. And for the interior one, I just put it on here. I just feed it in. Trying to pop out the other one, so I should do that first. So, yeah, put that one in first, like that, and then come in and pop in that bearing next. That's it. And then put one of the swing arms in. Seems all right. So you gotta line it up. Line that up and then line this up. Make sure these line up correctly. And then the dog bone lines up with the front one layer. Snap that guy back on. Put the pin back in. Oops, missed. I'm trying to get used to doing things on camera. That's, you know, something I'm not used to. Let me redo that real quick. All right. Get this pin back in there. There we go. That's how it should go. This little clip back on. These are real easy to lose. I don't trust those at all. All right, let's put the spring back in. These can be hard to deal with too. Okay. All right. We got one metal. Swing arm down, three to go. Okay. Same thing, a little plastic clip. Grab the pin, pull that out. Just pull this guy off. Bearing came with that one. Okay, this might be a little tough to get off. Just, yeah, it's on there pretty good. There we go. Jeez. Careful not to bend anything if you do have to like pop one off. I try to avoid using metal when I can. 
like that. Plastic tools are safer. There's one degree camber, replaced three degree. One bearing in. There you go. Alright, those are both in. That's it. All right, so the front end is already done. So got the metal swing arms and then three degree, cam three degree camber now. So it wasn't too bad, yeah. It's a little bit of a pain, but you know, nothing nobody can do. All right, so the rear end, I gotta take out these screws. There should be six screws in total. Yeah, this might be in the way. It's my little uh, Wi-Fi module for the digital LEDs. But should hopefully not be in the way for this part. I can just move it around. Yep. Oh, what is this guy? Start with this one. Looking a little dirty. Nice. Yeah. This can be a pain. At least this part's easier. Oh wait, what am I doing? <laughs> I don't have to take these off. I just need to put the swing arms in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so don't need to take the bearings out of the back set. For some reason, I thought I had some camber knuckles, but I only have them for the front. All right, so all we gotta do is just add the swing arm and that's it. <clears throat> doing more work than I need to. It happens. This can be a pain. Use gravity to 
help get that thing lined up in there. These are really on there. Okay. I do need to clean these things out eventually, but I'm not going to do that right now, obviously. I'm just going to put these in, drive them around for a little bit, and then have to do an overall cleaning later. But this is it, this is the last part of this uh, upgrade here once I get this in. Sorry, just had to get a better angle there. All right, so now we got the metal swing arms in the rear. Gonna wiggle this thing back into place. Not too bad. Okay. Make sure nothing's caught, pinched. Okay. Looks good. Let's put the screws back in. Careful putting this screw in. This little capacitor always wants to get in the way. And last screw. I can put the wheels on. Once I put the nut on there, that'll tighten that up. too bad you know the bearings can be kind of annoying when they get stuck to these old you know these old swing arms here just gotta be careful when you pop them off I just use a pair of tweezers you know just pinch both sides and then slide straight down and, you know that doesn't really bend it up at all at least it doesn't look like it uh, but yeah so these these old you know stock swing arms are, are they're okay but I, I feel like metal ones would be better this feels like this might be metal here but this is plastic over here, like this whole joint. Uh, I just don't trust it. So some metal swing arms will hopefully be a good improvement. You know, at least it'll help with durability because I don't think those metal ones are gonna break on anything. So yeah, so these wheels uh, will be interesting uh, with these uh, round drift tires on there. I'm gonna see how they do, how they do on different surfaces. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for installing all the parts for the stage two upgrades. 
Um, I'm going to go into some other things now after this, you know, about the white bodies, the, you know, the um, car bodies and the FPV mounts for cameras and everything and also the digital LEDs and headlights and taillights. Uh, I got most of these parts uh, online through AliExpress um, from various RC uh, shops that are on their website. Um, it seems to be the best place to get, you know, cheap little RC car parts and drone parts too, because I, I also build micro drones. Um, but yeah, so AliExpress is basically where I get most of these little parts uh, for pretty cheap. The shipping is cheap, but most of the stuff's coming out of China and Japan, so you know, expect like two to three weeks for shipping. But um, for how cheap it is, it's usually pretty worth it. Uh, and I don't really know where else you can get any of these parts really, you know, domestically in the United States. So. It's basically the only option I have. So if you're having any ideas uh, where I'm getting these, you know, I'll try to leave any links down in the description for you so you can find them if you are curious and you know wanna put some of these on your car. One more thing about the metal swing arms before we move on. Uh, the original set that I ordered um, seems to have gotten like lost in the mail. It's been sitting in, uh, USPS has, it's been sitting in New York for about two months now, so they must have like dropped it behind something, and I don't know the shipping just it just hasn't it hasn't moved. So I don't know what's going on. You know, I contacted the the sellers. It's not AliExpress's fault, but since I couldn't get those, I got these other generic ones, and you know, I mean, they're not they're not terrible, but they're not as good as like the ones that I originally ordered. So these are like you know a very cheap cheap set. Like I said, I'm gonna have to shave down. The, uh, the end a little bit because it's a little bit too long. The threading is a little bit too long. But everything else seems to be about the exact same size when it comes to length and everything. So um, they should be you know, good enough to do the job. But I might have to make you know, a couple different uh, extra mods to make them work right. Just sucks because uh, the ones that I originally ordered would have been you know, made to fit perfectly. But instead I had to go with this second option so it is what it is just want to let you guys know a quick update on what adjustments i had to make after the installation was done um, since there was a little bit of play in between the wheel and the wheel hub there i had to uh, add a washer to the swing arm just one little three millimeter uh, washer. And that's all I needed to add inside there in the wheel hub uh, to get rid of all that little extra movement that was going on inside there. So that fixed it. I also shaved down this nub a little bit and ended up using um, <clears throat> some locking nuts instead, some metal ones instead of the plastic ones they come with. So that's yeah, a lot better. There's. There's no extra play in there anymore. So I took care of that. Also, um, I took the chance to clean everything too, the bearings out. And I, also, I realized that I didn't mention in the video with the little wheel hubs here, the two bearings that are in here, they're uh, one-sided bearings. So the side that's open, you want to actually face down inside the wheel hub here. And then with the, uh, with the other bearing, you want the, the open side to face the opposite way out towards the other bearing. So they're facing each other on the inside of the wheel hub and then uh, dirt won't be able to get inside them. And if dirt ever does get inside the bearing, then it'll come out, you know, of those sides of the, the open sides of the bearings. And that's, you know, what they're supposed to do. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, in theory, but uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that when I was uh, taking it apart and putting it back together. So just make sure you face the bearings the right way when you put them back into here. Yeah. But overall, I, I also cleaned and lubed everything up the front one way and uh, all the wheel hubs and everything, I, the bearings, I lubed them up, cleaned them out a little bit. So everything sounds smooth and feels good. Uh, so yeah, I like the upgrade so far. I wish I could get more steering angle. Yeah, like, like I have on my K969. Uh, I did this mod myself, I made it rear wheel drive. 
I also did a uh, very low profile suspension mod where I can put low profile mini Z bodies on it. The springs are down inside there. Okay, yep. I'm actually gonna do a rebuild of this guy uh, soon and upgrade it. New chassis and everything. Make it brushless. Get a metal, metal gear uh, servo. Oh, all the parts and stuff I just got in a bag, just waiting to be thrown onto there. So I'll do a video on that, um, so stay tuned. I'm gonna show you how the sensitivity on the gyro works real quick. Uh, this little dial right here, you can use a flathead or even you can use a needle nose if you want. Um, but that's how you would adjust it going clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, so let me turn this thing on. All right, so you can hear, hear the gyros working. So I think we go clockwise, we'll make it stronger. Yeah. Okay, let's go the opposite direction and make it weaker. Yeah, so it's like the opposite way. It's pretty much doing nothing now. So that's too far that way. It ends up just turning it off. And I had it close to here, which wasn't too far off from the factory setting. Yeah, that's good. It's good for now. I'll test it again and make sure that that's where I want it. But yeah, that's all you gotta do if you want to adjust the sensitivity gain on your uh, on your steering with the gyro. So all right, now let's talk about what's going on right here. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi module in the back, and it needs to run power straight from the batteries. And then this is a step up and step down five volt regulator that needs to run the power straight from the batteries here, and then it'll convert. Uh, whatever the voltage is to 5 volts since it's a step up and step down voltage regulator because four AAA batteries fully charged is 6 volts but they will discharge lower than 5 you know down to 4 volts or less so I need this to be able to put out 5 volts even when it goes lower than 5 volts and this is for my FPV equipment and this uh, Wi-Fi module is for the digital LEDs that I have on the bodies um, so yeah I had to solder them straight to the main power leads inside here in this housing. So I said I'd show you inside here. Just take these two screws out of the way. And I gotta make sure this clip uh, comes loose. Try to break it, it's plastic, you know. There we go. There's also a clip back here, and you don't wanna knock any of this stuff either, so be careful. Uh, I'm not gonna go too crazy, because I, I really have everything shoved in here tight. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up from the front. I can yeah, unclip this one a little bit. There we go. All right. The main board's tucked in here. All right, so there's the wires in there for the uh, uh, gyro that I just tucked away down in here, you know. I try not to have it touch the antenna because I don't want to mess with the, the signal, but it, it should be fine. It shouldn't really uh, interfere with that too much. Um, but here is where I had to solder everything on, so power leads to the Wi-Fi module and then the power leads to the 5 volt regulator. And I just, you know, weaved everything through so I had to solder it through this plastic housing because I wanted everything to look clean, you know, and out of the way. Um, this little connector is for my headlights and taillights I already made. 
made a connector for that. I just pulled it out of the way for now so I can you know, show you all this stuff. Uh, but that'll plug in there and then plugs in for the headlights and taillights. All right. But yeah, that's, that's what it looks like underneath here. Better idea. So I got a lot going on. All right. So yeah, that's, that's all you gotta do. And then make sure when you put it back together that the antenna lines back up with the hole. That goes through. And then all the wires tuck in. Nothing gets snagged. All right. And then the clips. We're good. Back is clipped in. Yep. All right, so everything's back in. I just gotta put the screws back in. But yeah, that's, that's all you gotta do if you wanna tuck the wires in underneath there. You can just take these two screws out and just lift the housing up. And then you can bury the, the gyro wires down in there if you want. And of course, if you wanna do any uh, soldering if you want to add any power supplies for you know like this wi-fi module or a five volt regulator you're gonna to have to solder those little pads in there to get the power you need to power your electronics so that's that's all that there is there for that all right let's talk about the unpainted car bodies as you can see i'm a little bit of an r34 skyline fan um, since I have three of these here to customize. The one in the middle obviously came uh, out of the box with my MA020 and I did some slight changes to it, but nothing too crazy. Uh, while these two are going to get, you know, obviously painted by me, but they're also gonna get some other extra upgrades like, if you couldn't tell, I already put wings on them. And then of course body kits, like I was saying before. Uh, I got this body off of eBay uh, from some random seller. And then the wings that come on them, or the, you know, the, the stock wings, uh, there's actually plastic that protrudes up and um, you actually have to cut it off if you want to get rid of it. And then make, a, make your own holes if you want to add like a wing that you can take on and off, um, unfortunately. So I just don't like the stock one. It looks, it looks too small for the car. So I know I do kind of make them kind of big looking as well, but you know, mo most racing, like, you know, GT style wings are, are, are pretty big. So, um, overall, I like the look of them. So uh, that's what I'm going with. This one is on the, the back of the trunk mounted, uh, pretty much like the one I did here for my stock car. A uh, different design, of course. But yeah, I, I took the one off of, uh, of course, I don't have Millennium Jade paint. So I just, you know, covered it up with some some silver sharpie, so don't judge me. Um, you can't even notice it anyway, you know, from the size or whatever. I was debating on painting this whole trunk black to get rid of that, but <clears throat> I just don't care. And, you know, it's not that noticeable, so I we'll just keep it like this the way it is. I like it this way. And then over here, uh, I actually got this from like a Japanese hobby shop, I think, and it actually came with a full body kit too. That's not. Um, obviously attached to the car. I got to glue it on the car and then uh, paint it, you know, after I'm done, after I'm done sanding everything. But I actually tried a new design with a, a bumper mounted wing on this one. So it's something different. Uh, I don't really see any bumper mounted wings on any Mini Z cars. So I'm probably the first guy that's doing this. So, you know, the, they both look good, you know, either way, um, I'm fine with either look. All three of them, you know, look good. And there's there's other designs too that I have. Uh, you know, I, I can swap them in and out whenever I want. You know, I change my mind a lot. So I'll, I'll go from one design to the next. Uh, but for now, I like these. So I'll stick with these setups. Uh, 
until I change my change my mind down the road. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's weird. This must be one of the bodies that um, was some from the original batch, like the first ones they made. I think they uh, some of the original bodies were made of this kind of material, which it's it's kind of see through, and you know it's it's a little bit different. It's not exactly the same. This white. Uh, is actually pretty solid white to where you can't really see through the, the plastic very well. Um, while this you can actually see like on the other side of it, you know, it's like transparent. So I might have to spray some black spray paint inside the interior uh, to kind of help keep from any of the light leak going through from my LEDs. So that's something I'll have to find out later. And then I can see on the, on the hood, they don't have the little scoop thing here on this one. They have it on this one. And then the actual bumper is, like all the little details are a little bit sharper on the left side, you know, the white one, while they're a little bit more like smooth and rounded on this one. But I'm gonna cover up a lot of the body with the body kit, so I guess, then you know, that's fine. It works for this one, to be honest. I'm doing a slight body kit on this one. It's not gonna be as big. Actually, just, just you know, side skirts and a front bumper, while this one's actually getting fenders and, you know, side skirts, front bumper, back bumper, and, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, that's why I threw the bumper wing on this one, so I felt like that would suit that whole body kit set up pretty well. All right, let's see. So, this is our backup wing I printed for that guy. Oh yeah, also, uh, I, I printed up this these little hood bonnets. Uh, you know, it's kind of close to the the ones that would be on a skyline. So I'll just have to glue it down. And then I, I also have putty, some little, little putty I can, you know, kind of get in the edges here and kind of smooth it out so it kind of blends in with the body better. And then when I paint over it, you won't even know that there was, you know, any lines. Uh, so that should be pretty interesting to see how that comes out. But yeah, I got a bonnet for each body. I do have a bonnet for that one, but I don't think I'm going to put it on. I have to like paint it black, the hood black and everything. It's going to be a pain. I'd rather just do these from scratch instead and just keep that one the way it is. But yep, yeah, so I'll throw that on there. Yeah, uh, side skirts. Because uh, yeah, I noticed when um, from the side view, you can see the bottom of the chassis and the motor mount pretty easy. Well, the front bumper sticks down pretty low. Um, the side skirts don't. So I do want to extend the side skirts down, uh, especially with the uh, LEDs, it'll, it'll look better. So this should bring the side skirt down just where I want it in line with the front bumper. Uh, so I'm gonna have to glue this guy on and I might use some putty to help you know, smooth out the areas and blend it in better. So we'll see how it comes out after I glue it on though. But yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, kind of curious to see how it comes out. This is the first time I've, you know, I've ever tried doing this. I mean, I've painted bodies, but I've never actually put like body kit pieces on and then painted them after that. So this little piece is just gonna be bottom lip and then I'll, I'll use putty to merge that together better. Yeah, nothing too crazy, just you know, just the lip and the side skirts, and that's, and of course the the hood body. But that's all I'm going to do to this body. Um, and see how that one turns out. And the headlights, taillights, all the little parts, of course the windows. All right, and then the other guy over here. All right, so for some, I guess these old models also had like brown tinted glass instead of the black, like the newer ones, which kind of annoys me. I wanted it black, but you know, can't really do anything about it. And then they cut that hole out in the back window too for the antenna, but they don't do it on the newer ones. So that's the differences I noticed between these bodies. Uh, so I can, I can assume this is an older model. And then also the taillights aren't even painted uh, red or anything like the other ones are. 
which actually had a silver uh, backing to it, but I wiped it off with goof off so now it's transparent again uh, so I can shine my LEDs through the lights because I wouldn't be able to do it with that silver paint on the back of it. It would just want to see through. So I, I just wiped it off with goof off and that actually cleared you know, all that silver out of the way so I can actually get light to shine through. And that's how these tail lights came out too. I had to do the same thing. So yeah, and I have um, some black, like uh, transparent smoke paint that I'll put on these uh, these tail lights so they'll be all blacked out, but still see through. You know, so that should be interesting and be all smoked. Maybe I might do that with the headlights too. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. So here's one of the bumper wing prototypes I have. I mean, there's not really much to it. Uh, I decided to just make it one screw to keep it, you know, simple. Um, so yeah, I just made that piece that goes across here to keep the, the wing stable here. Cause you know, this is really thin. So 3D print isn't strong as, you know, it can easily break if it's thin enough. So this is enough uh, strength where, I mean, I, I can, bend it and mess with it and it, it's not going to break unless I really really try so I'm not really worried about you know snapping if I did break it I'll just print another one so I'm not really worried about it I just gotta uh, throw epoxy on it and then sand it down and then paint it you know it's, it's not terrible uh, but yeah it's nice how I can just make my own designs I change the you know fins out of different shapes or you know sometimes I use different uh, shape for this too like you can see I got you know, straight and curved and whatever bunch of different stuff I've been trying out but yeah and these were the little the little nubs that I had to cut off and I actually used a razor actually a razor that has little saw teeth on it and I had to saw them off because it was too hard to do with like an exacto knife or anything this plastic was pretty thick and I didn't want to like really destroy the whole area around it. Um, I had to do it on all three of them to get these out of the way for my little aftermarket wings that I'm putting on. Okay, so here's the body kit, the full body kit for this guy. Back bumper, side skirts. Front bumper, hood bonnet. So this is the back. This is where the, I think the um, gas little thing is right here. Yeah. So these fenders. Okay, this one for the front, and then there's the ones for the back. All right, so yeah, you just put this on there. Line everything up as good as you can. I gotta glue it on. And then I have the, um, the putty that I'll fill in the cracks wherever I need to kind of, you know, mold the, the body kit together. So there's not, you know, any creases or anything in areas I don't want it to be. And it'll look like, you know, like a professional job, hopefully. But, you know, in theory, we'll see how it comes out. <laughs> uh, but these are actually pretty good. Like, I mean, they're pretty precise. If there's anything that's a little bit off, I can, you know, adjust it with, you know, a razor blade or something. But, I mean, these are going to be pretty good. Just glue them, you know, into place perfectly. And then uh, if I even need to use any of the putty, I'm not too sure if I will. We'll see. But I, I like this this kit. Well, it's like the only kit they had left. I mean, everything else that was out there is just it's gone. <clears throat> it's been bought up, and you know I, it's hard to find anything as it is. So you gotta buy things from China and Japan. Uh, you know, coming from the U.S. here. But yeah, I mean, most of these uh, body kits and stuff that I found so far on the internet um, come from Garage Hero, like H I R O, Garage Hero, and like. He's got a ton of different body kits and other accessories for car bodies for Mini Z's. And there's actually a couple other body kits I'm thinking about doing that I saw uh, 
that he has on his website. So I, I might get one for a Supra, one of the new Supras, do a body kit on that. And then my P1 McLaren uh, GTR, I might put a, you know, a nice wide body on that one too. There's a pretty big front lip. I mean, they fit like perfectly. It just snaps into place. Almost snaps into place, but that's pretty good. Um, I'm pretty sure these are printed from resin, not 3D printed material like PLA or anything. Uh, it's from a resin printer. Uh, I can only do 3D prints. That's why I stick with wings, uh, and I can do you know like like a hood bonnet. Um, which I put epoxy on them already. I just gotta sand them and then paint them with the car. Uh, but I can't do resin and, and body parts like this, like front bumpers and side skirts that fit perfectly to the mold. Yeah, I, I can't really do that. I mean, maybe down the road I can figure that kind of stuff out. But right now, ugh, I'm, you know, I'm a simpleton. I, I don't know how to do that kind of stuff. So this is the next best thing for me. I'll just, you know, buy it from somebody that already made it. It's not, they're not expensive. He sells them from like five to twenty-five dollars, depending on what kits you're trying to get like if you're just getting like a wing or a whole fender and side skirts and everything you get all of it you know this body with this body kit I think was only like 25 or 30 dollars total with everything um because I guess they've had it for you know a long time maybe I don't know but it was pretty cheap on there so it was hard for me to pass up um, but yeah that's that's pretty much it for the uh the bodies and what kind of cosmetics you can add to them not much else you can really do when it comes to you know, adding pieces to to you know plastic body. That's about it. Um, I gotta drill out holes for the headlights, and then the taillights are fine. And then I'll add my digital LEDs and stuff to these too, which will be one of the next things I talk about, like we have on this guy. So my digital LEDs. Yep, and then. The headlights, and then there's taillights in there too. So I'll show you that uh, next. Oh, and here's a couple other bumper mounted wings I have. This Ferrari set up for the MA020 because it's got a 94 millimeter wheelbase. And, uh, my MR03s are 98 millimeters, so I couldn't run this body on them. I can only run it on my drift car. So yeah, I didn't like the stock spoiler, so I threw on a 3D printed bumper wing I designed. It'll probably look a lot better when it's painted. Um, so yeah, there's that one. And then Lambo. So I already painted this one, you know, matte black. Came out pretty good. Uh, wasn't perfect. I mean, I could really make them like, you know, better if I, uh, if I put the time into them, but I you know, just wanted to get these things done. So, but it looks good enough. Yeah, so it's a new design that uh, I came up with. Um, so I haven't seen anybody else do that yet. So I guess that's unique to my build so far, but yeah. Now on to the LED part of the video. If you haven't seen my Mini Z and LEDs video yet, uh, when, you got, when you get a chance, take the time to go watch that video since I cover everything from top to bottom on how I uh, make and install these LEDs for the uh, entire Mini Z line, you know, the uh, MR03 and the MA020 and, and custom builds as well. So if you get a chance, go watch that video and you'll have a better understanding of what I'm going to be talking about here because I'm not going to cover everything right now. Um, but yeah, these connectors right here are for my headlights and taillights. Uh, this little connector right here that's on the body, um, if you don't have one, you're going to need to get one. Uh, sometimes they come with bodies that have headlights and taillights that are pre-installed. 
um, but that little connector right there will give you the option to control them from the car to where you could have the headlights flashing or solid on uh, and also the brakes are um, they're you know functional to where if you drive and then stop the brakes will light up when you stop so that's pretty nice that they look realistic from that um, but yeah I make I make LEDs uh, from stuff I find on Amazon like these tiny little 0603 size LEDs that come pre-wired uh, dipped in like some epoxy and these are great for headlights and taillights really I got red ones too um, they're very lightweight small and I uh, solder them up and then I put them on my bodies and then, you know hook them into the car and then you know they do their job so let's see give you a little sample these guys turned on so yeah so these little headlights they're pretty bright you can make them brighter or dimmer depending on how many what type of resistor you use uh, but they do come with resistors. They want you to use one per uh, per LED, but I usually can get away with two per one resistor, you know, to save on room and, and everything. So there's only two resistors in here right now, controlling four LEDs, and they have no problem. And then, uh, that's white. Of course, I have red ones for tail lights. Yeah. very small but they do a good job so I like using these uh, so I just double sided tape them you know to the inside of the body um, like I said I had to drill out holes on the, the body to be able to fit them through on the on this R34 skylines so you just gotta drill some small holes right there for however many lights you want to use and then just push them into the hole and then that's where they'll sit i put some double-sided tape to hold them in place and that's basically all i, all I have to do so i tape it down and then the connectors connect to the car and that, that's it for the headlights and taillights and i put a bunch of tape here electrical tape as well to keep the light from leaking out and you know uh, shining through the body or just shining everywhere so i put tape everywhere so the light only comes out of the taillights yeah, and then <clears throat> the digital LEDs are also another thing. It's like having, you know, underglow neons, but better since they can change all different colors and do different sequences of, you know, flashing and patterns and you know, other things like that. And I can control through Wi-Fi on my phone uh, through the uh, little Wi-Fi module that's on board on the car. So this is where it powers the LEDs. And then also this is where I talk to the LEDs through my phone on this little Wi-Fi adapter. So, and that just goes directly to the main uh, battery lines here from the AAAs. So these LEDs run five volt and they can actually run on six volt, even up to eight volt. But if you run anything higher, like 12, uh, it'll blow these little LEDs out. So they can handle, you know, around eight volt because I've plugged in 2S and they, they didn't blow out, so they work. Uh, but five volt is what they're rated for. Um, and then AAA batteries, four of them fully charged at six volts, so you can run six volts and then they, you know, drops down to five volts and it's still fine. But once it starts getting down to four volts or lower, the LEDs will start to go out because they can't stay on. They need at least five volt. Um, so if you wanted to keep going, you would need to add a step up, step down regulator on that car for the LEDs, which I have one on here, but it's for my FPV gear, not for the LEDs because I don't, you know, I don't really need them that bad if they run long enough with just the stock, you know, uh, batteries without a five volt regulator. So I just stick with that. Uh, so yeah, so the LEDs are very interesting. Um, let's see, can plug one in here. So here's the strip. They come usually in a meter. Uh, uh, they used to come with 60 LEDs in a meter. Now I got a version that comes with 96 LEDs in one meter, which is a lot, a lot more little LEDs, uh, as you can see. These are, these are spaced closer together. So there's about three LEDs for where there's usually about, you know, where every two were on these, the old model here. So these put out a lot more light, but that does mean they consume more power too. So just gotta keep, keep that in mind. 
Um, but yeah, I usually just cut these, just cut in the middle of the copper pads so you can solder on either side and then you gotta solder them to where the digital signal follows the arrow, the arrow uh, throughout the whole, the whole strip, whichever way you're doing it. So for me, it starts here, this little connector runs from this way. Then I just do 30 gauge wire, like three strands of 30 gauge wire. I just twist up very, very small, you know, lightweight wire and then solder it to those little pads and do the same thing all the way around where all the wheel wells are. And then to, to get a strip to bend around a front bumper like this, I actually had to bend, oh, sorry. I had to bend the strips in between the LEDs to get that, you know, that curving motion going, almost like an accordion, uh, to bend it around. And then I put double-sided tape to stick it against there and also to keep the light from like shining through. So, yeah. And that's how I put those in. Um, plug it into the car real quick. Let's plug in the headlights. Tail lights, and then the digital LEDs. Okay. Now I just keep all the connectors tucked up there out of the way. Just make sure they don't get snagged on the wheels or anything. That's it. So right now I have it on blue and turquoise uh, wave, I think it's called. So it just goes back and forth between the two colors. And then headlights and taillights are not on because the car is not on yet, even though the batteries are in. So once we turn the car on, there we go. You got your headlights, you got your taillights. Nice. I guess I could, oh, I should have plugged this in earlier. I'll, I'll turn the remote on and show you how the brake lights function if you are curious. So if you wanna make the headlights flash, this little channel four knob, you rotate it the other way, they'll flash slow, and you start rotating it back, they'll flash faster and faster until they're solid when you get all the way over to this side. And that's it. All right, so, so throttle, brake, throttle, brake. Those work fine. Yep. And that's the LEDs for the Mini Z MA020. Not much else to it. Um, I hope that you know, answered any of your questions about the LEDs. Uh, if you have anything else, leave a comment down below. Uh, I'm gonna get into the FPV gear next. All right, so for the last part of this video, I'm gonna cover the 3D printed FPV mounts that I make for my, uh, my Mini Zs. Um, so I decided to go with mounting on these two screws for the MA020 to mount my camera. And my goal is to be able to keep the bodies on uh, while I'm driving FPV, you know, first person view. Um, so I designed these little mounts here so the camera could pop up through where the windshield would be. Uh, while I still keep the body on, I just uh, keep the windows removable. So I can just take the windows out and then I just screw on this mount right there. And then the camera sits inside here. 
Uh, so this one's just if I want to run the camera by itself, I would just set that there. I would just take those two screws out and then put this down in there and then put the screws back in and it sits right there. And you can adjust the camera up or down if you want. Uh, I made this mount. This is for the camera and then also if I want to put an HD camera in the back to record from, <clears throat> like my, uh, my Caddx Peanut and my uh, GoPro Hero 6, my Naked Hero 6, because they, they both weigh around 30, 30 plus grams, so uh, they're light enough to put on these cars you know, without weighing them down too much. So it's pretty simple. I got you know two screw holes here for the camera. So I haven't put any screws on this one yet. But yeah, that's how I would mount it. It was right there. And then I designed a 3D print here to where these protrude down into the hole where the screws come out. So it seats down in there. And then I put the screws back in down through the little hole on top and that really secures it into place. Uh, it's pretty sturdy when it's on and that's what I want. I don't want to like just tape or glue My camera to like the hood or anything. I want to be able to just have a 3d printed piece that I can just screw on or you know screw off whatever and Then I can still still drive with the bodies on but I'll have the camera just sitting right here Out where the window would be just looking right over the hood So you would have a little bit of the hood in the bottom of the view So it looks like you're driving inside, you know the driver's seat of the car so that's my goal, at least that was my goal with uh, making these 3D prints. Um, it had to be different for each Mini Z, so I chose the, this area right here for my mount. And then I had to make sure that the measurements were right to where I could fit the print, you know, to come up through the window. So it'll sit like that, so the camera. be out in front and then that mount right there I can mount an HD camera you know, whichever one I want and then get HD footage right off top of the car here might make it a little bit top heavy so I gotta be careful with how I drive it but I mean that's just one of the methods I might you know make mount for you know, front bumper or something or in the back, I don't want to make it too back heavy. Uh, I do kind of want to do some third person uh, shots, or some views, so I might put like a, a stick or a 3D printed thing that it, you know sticks out, and then I can get the camera to the back, and then you know you can see like the car in the video. So like kind of like the camera's right here, or maybe off to the side. I don't know. I'll, I'll try a couple of different things figure out what is actually possible, um, depending on what I can make and how I can mount them. Because, uh, I mean, they're light, but they're still still pretty heavy for what they are. I mean, if I have a lot of weight off to one side of the car or not, it's really going to mess with the way it drives. So those are just some ideas I've been going over. Uh, mainly, I just really want to be able to drive FPV. Because uh, I'm used to driving, or not driving, I'm used to flying my drones in FPV. So it's just, you know, something that I naturally just want to do. And it can be pretty fun driving these things around like you're in the actual driver's seat, you know. Um, so I mean, I, I make little, <clears throat> little racing drones and uh, cinematic drones. So if, like these guys are for fun. And then some of these little drones, these are more for you know, cinematic uh, footage and stuff. even drop down to this size. And what's great about these little drones is that these uh, video transmitters that have come out in the past you know, a few years are so small and lightweight, you can put them on anything now because you know, look how small these drones are. They have to be really, really lightweight. So I'll just put one of these in the back of my car. This I can just kind of you know, tape, double-sided tape anywhere in the back or even on the inside of the car. You know, So I'll have the camera in the front and then I'll have the transmitter anywhere I really want because it doesn't really matter and then have the antenna just sticking up enough to where I'm getting good signal and then this 5 volt regulator just connect the power to that and then the power from this guy also powers the camera so I just hook up that plug to the camera <laughs> it's 
yeah. That's it. That's all you gotta do to get FPV video on your RC car. Now, like I said, you could tape it on or, you know, like glue it, but I mean, I don't wanna mess with the body too much. Um, like, if there's a paint, like, you know, once the, the body's painted and everything, I don't, I don't wanna be putting stuff on the actual body anywhere. I'm gonna try to just, you know, I wanna keep everything attached to the chassis somewhere. So if I can screw it in somewhere like that, or even have like a mount that comes out the back with the, the camera on it, uh, I might try doing that. So, but yeah, that's what I got going on right now. Um, I, you know, I just designed these on Tinkercad, just, you know, nothing crazy. And then just uh, printed it with Cura as a slicer, you know, and I'm still, you know, I'm not, I'm still kind of a novice or whatever you want to call it for 3D printing. But uh, it's nice that I can just make any little weird, you know, design, uh, just at a whim whenever I want and try something different. So I just like having that, that ability. But yeah, that's all I got for this. So um, I, I hope you uh, got some information out of that. And if you have any questions, like I said, just drop a comment down below and then I'll, I'll you know, do my best to answer it. Um, like I said, with my other Mini Z, the MRO3, I had to make some different mounts too. Like, Cause I actually screwed it down to these screws here. So it's a little bit different. It's got to go over that plastic. So it's a different design I had to do. Um, but overall, same concept, you know, this, this plugs down into it and then the screw goes down on top and holds it in place. It's pretty sturdy. Yeah. And then I have one for the camera and the HD as well. But that's all there is to it. There's really nothing else. And there's just a camera. You plug that in, the video transmitter, just get power, and then you know, my, my FPV goggles pick up the signal and I'm good to go. So that's all it is. I almost forgot to show you how it looks when it's mounted on. So here's the one with the HD camera and the FPV camera. So, you know, pretty simple. FPV camera in front and then HD camera right above it. Yep, and then I would just put the video transmitter back here anywhere I want. But I would just remove the glass from the body and then mount the 3D print to the chassis and put the body on. You're good to go. Yeah, I can show you uh, taking the mount off real quick. I just gotta get this HD camera out of the way. There we go. All right, so the HD camera's out of the way. I'll pop the body off. So yeah, these two screws hold it down. Everything's black, so it's kind of hard to see. But it's got a little bit of a you know, bounce to it, which might be good, might be bad. It might help uh, get rid of some of the vibrations in the camera, or it might introduce, you know, vibrations. So if it's too bouncy, I'll just secure it down, you know, some tape or strap it or something. Uh, otherwise, it might actually help get rid of some of the bounciness that'll be happening on the car. It might help uh, dampen it. So I uh, still gotta test that to find out if it's gonna be helpful or not. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the FPV mounts. Um, if you if you want to know more, or you want to see some more on these anyway. Don't worry, I'm making a uh, another video on like you know all the Mini Zs uh, and FPV. You know, so all this I will cover in that video in more detail, um, and actually will show my, you know driving around in FPV. Uh, but yeah, that's all it is for this. Uh, just like I said, the two screws right here holding it down. Take this off real quick. Just 
to show how easy it is. And I know like taping stuff down could be easy too, but it can also be, a, you know, a mess or annoying. So this this isn't too bad. Um, luckily, the screws are long enough to be able to do this, and you want to make sure not to strip out the plastic and in the frame here too so just you gotta be careful i don't want to you know screw in and unscrew screws too many times to where i strip out these holes and then i'd be like a whole new front piece or something so just got to keep that in mind as well but yep that's everything when it comes to the fpv mounts and hd mounts for the ma020 all right so that's pretty much it for the install part of this video and all the other things that i covered um I just want to say thank you if you made it this far. I know it was a pretty long video, but uh, you know there's a lot of information that I, I need to go over, and you know I want to make sure I get that information out so you guys can do whatever you want with it. Um, uh, I appreciate it if you if you have you know given me your time, and I'm going to make a few more or many other videos here in the future uh, of the Mini Z's, you know whether it's CMA 020 or uh, my MR03s. Or both of them together but uh, once again thank you um, next part is going to be the test drive after putting the stage 2 upgrades on this guy so uh, I'm gonna go over you know to that video here in a second so you can watch and see how it does and see the improvements from the last upgrades that I did so uh, appreciate all your time uh, hope you guys can come back on my next video and I hope you have a good day